Please do take your seats. Thank you very much. Let me start by acknowledging the presence of various leaders in the House today, various participants, senators, cabinet ministers, other ministers. I know we have different titles in different countries, but all of those, all of you from not just in Zambia or Sadiq, but Africa and beyond Africa. We also wish to recognize the presence of our legislators, members of parliament from different jurisdictions, further to recognize our public sector workers, central governments, for us through the Secretary of the Cabinet and your counterparts from other parts of Africa, local government, civic leaders. We are in Chongwe district, so Mayor of Chongwe and your other mayors, council chairpersons. Within, from within the country and those that may have traveled from outside Zambia. I must also acknowledge the presence of our partners, technical partners, financial partners, strategic partners, as it were, but also the UN system, in particular the diplomatic corps. I have cited a number of them seated in this hall and indeed business people, business people because in today's government, I can tell you from experience, you cannot run a government, effective government, without working with the private sector, the business community, because they deliver. They deliver what we in government intend to get done for those who elected us into public office. Very important. I must also acknowledge specialists, technical people that are key to this summit, digitization in Africa. Very important component of what we intend to do as people charged with the responsibility to manage public affairs in Zambia, in our respective countries. So, media is also acknowledged. We are here deliberating that the world gets to know that we are in Tonga today through the media and what we are discussing. Through the media. So thank you, Mr. Media, for being present. Distinguished guests, let me just indicate how privileged I feel to be officiating at this platform, 2024 Digital Government Africa Summit, yet again. It's a very, very important subject that we're discussing and as I was deciding what to say and I must thank the speakers that have spoken before me today. I know you were in session yesterday and you will continue today and a couple of days from today. I want to thank all the speakers for the things that you raised and I want to avoid repeating those issues. And so I wish to focus on basically taking a different angle. What we want digitization to do for us. Why all these efforts, technical efforts, financial investments, other investments, calling people like yourselves who would have been doing something productive, something any new revenue 
in your offices, in your countries. I believe it's because we acknowledge that digitization, technology, ICT, is critical to answering our individual countries and the continent's quest for accelerating economic and social development. So digitization in the context of our desire as Zambia to accelerate our country's economic and social development, to improve the lives of those that elected us into public office. Simple, very simple. So as you deliberate, please take account of this context. That we expect you experts, partners, visa, others, to help us, to help the African population to grow our economies so we can take care of the larger part of our population in many respects. This is the youth population I'm talking about who need many things in to mitigate, to help mitigate some behaviors that we who are privileged to lead our countries must work with you to forestall illegal migration, for example. Boat people, you hear of the boat people. This subject partially or oh, these challenges can be answered by we in this room and those that work with us but are not in the room. So top on the agenda is to put context that we want to digitize because we want to use digitization technology, research and development to accelerate growth in our countries and, and the continent. With the least developed, there's no need to regurgitate that stuff. We least develop. We least digital. By and large, in comparative terms. So we need to leapfrog to get to a digital economy. And when I hear the usage of digital economy, I think we must put it in the context of even platforms to drive other sectors, specific sectors of our economies. For the organizers, I really would like us to remember this context. If we are not able to use digital platforms to deliver value for our people, so why the spend? Remember, resources are always scarce. Basic training, those of us who took economics, finance, the basic message is that the resource envelope is always small in comparison to the needs, to the demand. So why spend in this sector? Is because we know this sector will help us drive the various sectors of development that we would like to push forward to aggregate to grow our GDPs. Simple, straight. Now, we must also put context from that broad level. What is it that we want to see for example, in agriculture, given climate change, the damage that climate change is exposing our agriculture to. In one year, 
you may have a drought. In Zambia and in the Southern region, like now. Worst drought in living memory. In East Africa, two hours away, there were floods. Both of which conditions caused damage to the agriculture sector and therefore to food security. What is a digital technological platform supposed to do to help mitigate those challenges? That's a question. The answers are meaningless to yourselves. We need to be able to farm more efficiently drought-resistant genetic material, disease-resistant genetic material, high-yielding, first early maturing, high-yielding. I'm just putting context to what we expect you, the experts, to help us come up with solutions, given the challenges that we face. But once the researchers have done their work, how do we proliferate that genetic material so that even the smallest farmer can access it? How does the smallest farmer know about the better genetics? Digital platforms. Efficient delivery of those genetic, we call it seed. That's what you're supposed to help us answer. We still have Africa producing at low yields, very, very low yields. Even within one country, certain farmers, large farmers, will be producing at their higher yields, higher yields, the medium and small scale farmers, like they live in a different country. We must answer those questions. Let me give you another example. I heard the Minister of Home Affairs was talking about border areas. When we took public office three years ago, we had a conference in Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls, and we were talking about making our borders more efficient and we are priding ourselves of having one-stop border posts. And when it was my time to speak, I said, but what are we talking about here? One-stop border posts. We should have non-stop border posts. Non-stop. Is that possible? Yes, through what? Digitization, technology. When we load in a port in Maputo, in Bayra, in Durban, we should know, we in Zambia and Zimbabwe should know what we have loaded on which track, when it's arriving at the border, which minutes, and what is in there. And the track should just drive through. It is your digitization, your technology, that will help us lower the cost of moving goods from the ports into the market, in the demand area. There you are. I hope I'm making sense to yourselves. Okay. Collaboration is important. I can go on on examples, education, health. One of the booths out there, they were showing us a Zambian booth, how we are now able to monitor pregnancy and the complications that may arise at birth. Very important. And how we can reduce mortality at birth for the mother and the child. And I'm passionate about that. Zambians know that. Move away from there. Those are mundane things. It's very important. How do we keep a kid in school in a rural area where I was born myself and raised to be at par with a kid in Lusaka? In the urban areas. Digitization. Minister of Technology and I went to open a smart village somewhere in our country. 
and because of the digital platforms, now it's possible for a teacher to teach a child in a rural school, a child in Perry Urban, a child in the fastest growing city, at the same time, and deliver the subject seamlessly. If you do. Pack that. But may come back to trade. We want Africa free trade area. Your specialisms, your skills will help us accelerate the commercial study, ECOWAS, East African community, Africa free trade area. So we can trade with each other. We trade the least. We are the West continent that trades the least with itself. I hope you are already aware of that. So you will help us to break that very, very negative aspect where good spend of the scarce resources on our continent is going to the already developed continents. We buy from those continents. We can buy from each other because of these joints, these connections, it is what you are doing today, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the day after. That can help us to trade with each other much more than we're doing. And we need a revolution in that direction. As we meet at the AU presidents, we're talking about the Africa Free Trade Area. But that's not feasible, that's not possible without the digital platforms. Actually, not lagging behind, but moving ahead of those ambitions. If I may speak for my colleagues who are not here, other heads of state and government, this is what we expect you to help us with. And in that context, when one African country is ahead of others, it's the duty of that African country to pull the other countries that are behind. Because it will not help you grow your own economy, where I started from. Because your partners are not ready to trade with you. And you may end up buying expensively a service or a good from outside Africa. Of course, there are the challenges, infrastructure. We understand that. Other things being able. We understand that. So, it is important for us, and I'm, I, I like what I hear, that let's treat each other as partners. Those that have made progress, we must learn from them. It's also the obligation of those who have not advanced to ensure that they are great. So, mutual benefit. Now, let me return to my other subject as an example. If the Zambia border with Malawi at Chanida has no infrastructure and technological platform, how do we get to a non-stop border post? It means we're slowing down movement of goods. It means we're increasing the cost of doing business. That's what it means. We don't have the money. Remember, I said the resource development is limited. Why are we spending more than what we should spend? Because savings from there, with efficiency through the digital platforms and connectivity and common systems. I'm telling you a number of things that as granted, right? Common platforms, systems, therefore technology. If Malawi has made progress more than Zambia. It will not just hinder Malawi's business. It will hinder, not, sorry, it will not just hinder Zambia's business. It will hinder Malawi's business. So it's in the interest of Malawi to make sure that the Chanida board is working well. Very simple. So I like what I hear that one, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. No need to reinvent the wheel. Piggybacking from each other. Two, that it is in our interest to get this job done. Digital platforms. 
across Africa. Let me raise one issue which some presidents may not say. Some. I didn't say somebody in particular, I said some. I raise it for them because I'm the host. We are the host. We are holding back progress as governments. But sometimes we hold back progress, not because we want to, it's because we are not aware of how to avoid holding back progress. So on a platform like this, in a meeting like this, please check list from your collective experience the areas where you think those of us in government public office are holding the digitization agenda back. Check list those issues. Police issues, legislative issues, regulatory issues. It's easier to work with governments. And remember, I came from the private sector. So I used to say, why do governments work like this? I have found out sometimes, many times you think it's resistance. A number of times it's just ignorance. Complete ignorance. But some people may not tell you that they need help. So you now take the lead and say, our government must have the following minimums so we can achieve compatibility much quicker as we work on platforms, as we work on investments to upgrade. So please, as part of the outcomes, somehow not to distort your programming, Percy and your colleagues, is to say, these are the challenges we're facing and government can unlock these challenges through your collective experiences. And I think it's these issues that we can take when we meet as heads of state in these regional bodies, SADC, ECOWAS, uh, East African Community, Central Africa, and North Africa. We should be able to upload these issues from such platforms into our own program. And luckily, your senators, your ministers here, so they are the ones who create the agenda and your technical people for the heads of state. But I want to open or make that ask that let's have that coming through from yourselves. Again, having come, in, come from the private sector, sometimes I am reminded in cabinet meetings, ah, Mr. President, what you are saying, we don't do it like that in the civil service or public service. I said, really? I see. But I must also say that we don't do it like that in the private sector either. Because what you are telling me slows down progress. So there is nothing we cannot change as long as it's standing in the way of progress. But we must succinctly define that which you want changed. You can only do act on something you know, isn't it? You've, you've been made aware and you understand. So I'm throwing that challenge to yourselves. It makes our job easy. Government, private sector, partners, we in it together. Africa must grow. We have the resource endowments. We have the young population. A number of European countries are looking for labor now. Because the population is aging. Where do you think that labor sits? On our country, therefore, education is very important. Potential, yes, we are the labor. But we want skilled labor. So, education again, digital is very important. What type of skills do we want?
quality of education is important. The syllabi is important. This year we put more money in our 2025 budget to look at the syllabi so that it's appropriate. So that it answers the needs of industry digitization. Ladies and gentlemen, I could say more, but others have covered issues such as the risk of the flip side of digitization, the opportunities could also be the risk associated with the digital Africa, digital countries or economies where misinformation flies so quickly and could easily destroy our countries and our countries. You know what I'm talking about. I like what I did. So as we discuss here, we must also discuss the importance of not allowing the digital platforms to be abused to drive hatred, to drive problems that send the same energetic population in the streets. And after they killed people, after they damaged property, assets, only you realize that that action was based on a falsehood. The digital platforms can be abused. We are looking up to you to ensure that we flip the coin and utilize more of the positive aspects of digitization. Step Digitization, jobs, business opportunities for our people across our countries. I choose to end here and say thank you to the organizers, thank you to the participants for putting aside what you needed to do in your own office, your own country. And we are happy to host you here in Zambia. This continue. Let's be true partners. Amongst yourselves, within the country, across the countries, on our continent. And to be honest, we cannot ignore other parts of the world. We're not an island. Africa is not an island. We live in the context of arts. So let's continue our partnerships with global players that will help us to leapfrog on the technology, the best technology, not second view, but the best technology. You know my story. After that, I'll talk about capital, I'll talk about joint ventures, I'll talk about valuation. But technology, digital platforms will help us lower the cost of doing business deliver services to the remotest, those who live in the remotest parts of our countries. So you can see, you have a serious obligation. We have a serious obligation. Working together, we should deliver better lives for Africa and Africans and the world. We will be a worthy partner to the global community as countries and as Africa. We will not be Cinderella partners will be where they are. After all, Africa will help the world to become greener. Because we have the copper, we have the cobalt, we have the nickel, we have the manganese, we have the lithium. So, very well. It is true that other parts of the world need Africa. There's a perception that Africa is the only one in need. I disagree. Other parts of the world need Africa as much as Africa needs the other parts of the world. And that will give you a more sound relationship in your partnership. We need each other. With this, I would like to say the 2024 Digital Government Africa Summit is officially open. Thank you very much.
let me say, distinguished delegates. With your excellency, your digital transformation journey is getting momentum. But more needs to be done. A lot more needs to be done. And it is for that reason, Your Excellency, that we are all gathered here. Government, cooperative partners, private sector, and knowledge carriers to begin to create solutions to change life. Your Excellency, your mission to focus on policy reform, legal reform, creating appropriate incentives and tax concessions has delivered significant investment in digital infrastructure in the last three years. Your Excellency, your leadership is giving us the strength to do a lot more. And we pass as your excellency in towards Google in the corner. We have your excellency under partnership and collaboration, work with the Finnish government and with the Tom Blair Institute. We have developed the artificial intelligence strategy. With Google, your excellency, we are now working to deliver a center of excellence in emerging technologies, including AI, which will be housed here in Zambia. Your excellence is working with the UNDP. We are also going to deliver what is referred to as a mindset hub, which will be open for the rest of Africa to create solutions in the mining sector and to learn from each other. But your message has always been what is the value of technology? Your Excellency, the value of technology is for that citizen to be able to say thank you to technology. When government services delivered to the citizen, in Zambia we call it social card transfer. When that citizen receives that money and says thank you, that is the value of technology. Technology is about people and not about governments. Technology must change life. So connecting it as particularly from the tech environment, the job we have is the normal as ministers. Let us support our leaders in Africa to deliver the change that we deserve. And I will close with your excellency, just want to indicate that uh, 